Indie Label Owners Chart Record Struggles By Sheila Simmons, Plain Dealer Reporter, December 17, 1995 Publication, The Plain Dealer, Cleveland, Ohio Nina Records, a tiny independent record label on Cleveland's Eddie Ardy, was unsure of how to introduce Cosette Morgan to the local radio market. Nina officials discussed showcasing Morgan's sumptuous contralto to radio, press, and retail over food and drinks at Sammy's in the flats. That would be fun, someone said, but fun had nothing to do with getting Morgan's music played. How about pizza? On that aside, Nina had Domino's pizza boxes delivered to 600 radio, press, and retail representatives. Inside, it placed two Morgan compact discs, two Domino's pizza gift certificates, and a letter that read, We know this is a gimmick. Hopefully it will catch your attention. The song is not a gimmick. Listen to it, please. Morgan's debut single, The Moody Killer Blues, bubbled under the R&B charts, meaning it ranked just below the top 100 hits. Her second recording, All Out of Love, debuted at number 87, with a Billboard magazine bullet alongside it flagging the tune as a strong selling single. You have to be clever, says Irwin Bruder, Nina's owner. Six major recording and distribution companies, Polygram Group Distribution, Warner Electra Atlantic, BMG Distribution, Sony Music Entertainment, MCA Music Entertainment, and CEMA. Uni Distribution dominate the music industry. They supply 90% of music to record buyers in the United States. How do independent record labels compete? Being clever is an unwritten requirement. Nina and a handful of other Cleveland-based labels, Shining Star Records, Mo Thugs Records, and Stony Burke Records, have been just that and more. The four labels largely appeal to different audiences. The owners have different visions, but they all share one love that their independence lends them. Self-control. Shining star. The way Jim Buchanan sees it, sitting in his high-backed cushioned chair at Midtown Recording Studios in downtown Cleveland in 1996, is going to be a good year. We got hits, he says with a grin. Although the two-year-old shining star has yet to have a hit, the label has signed a number of high-quality acts who boast some professional touring and recording experience. It has a distribution agreement with a fledgling record company in Hollywood, Bellmark Records, Jody Watley tag team Johnny Guitar Watson, run by the former owner of the historic Stax Records. Shining Star hopes to capture the attention of the national recording industry with a roster of six artists, The Rude Boys, rapper Greg Nice, Cleveland Rap, Act Thieveland, vocalist Douglas Green, Cleveland saxophonist Russell Thompson, and Canton rapper C. Love, whom Buchanan calls a heavy D-type rapper, except he's not heavy. The Rude Boys and Thompson have February releases, while with Atlantic, the smooth, funky Rude Boys scored a number one R&B hit with 1991's Written All Over Your Face. The quartet is now a trio, minus Joe Little the third, who went solo, and it returns with some steamy high-production 90s flavor added to its mellow mid-tempos and smooth ballads. Thompson is a saxophonist who plays rich contemporary jazz tunes as well as original pieces. He plays local clubs with Free Agent and is a fixture on performances and recordings with the OJs, Lever, and Gerald Levert. Rap fans may be familiar with Nice, one half of the former duo Nice and Smooth, whose 1992 Sometimes I Rhyme Slow spent 18 weeks on the pop charts. But it was Green's songs that convinced Buchanan, a 36-year-old former professional baseball player for the San Francisco Giants and a former manager of area car dealerships, to start his own label. Buchanan recalls a major label artist and repertoire representative who rejected Green's music. Upon hearing it again at a Hollywood party, the rep delighted over it. Buchanan concluded, When they decide something is slamming, most of the time it's when it's somebody they already know, a friend's friend, or a cousin's friend, or some kind of hookup, to make this record happen. So I figure I can have a record company, he says. 
and make a record happen. Buchanan isn't new to the music business. It was his financial and personal support in Seattle years ago that set in motion the career of multi-platinum artist Sir Mix-a-Lot. Buchanan purchased the rapper thousands of dollars in audio equipment and directed him to various radio contacts. I have an ear, but more importantly, I know how to put people together, Buchanan says. I know how to run a business. Buchanan wants artists who sing positive lyrics, who avoid the violence and sexual explicitness that characterize too much of today's rap and R and B. A lot of youngsters feel they need to have that to make it in the rap world. Companies don't like it, Buchanan says, of the negative lyrical content. But it sells. Buchanan selected his label name from words a high school football coach long ago offered. Whenever I seemed like I was doubting something I was doing, he said, your star quality, a star will shine anywhere. So regardless of what happens here today, Buchanan says, I'm going to shine. I'm going to make it. Mo Thugs Records. It is not unusual to see Lazy Bone delivering rap lyrics to a crowd of screaming fans. What is unusual is seeing him deliver orders to an office manager and arranging interviews and a photo assignment. He and the other four members of Cleveland's multi-platinum Bone Thugs and Harmony have gone from just rap artists to businessmen. They own and operate Mo Thugs Records. It might appear they are struggling with the transformation. Lazy, 21, moves slowly into the office. He was out late partying the night before, something he admits he can ill afford to do when running a business and acting as a role model for aspiring rap and musical groups. Lazy wants his acts to sell a million records, just like his group did six times. And that perhaps is what sets Mo Thugs apart from the other local labels. Its owners have proven blockbuster selling potential in themselves and captured the ear of the industry with a fresh rap sound. The label's first album will be by Flesh and Bone and will be released this spring by Def Jam Recording and distributed by Island Records. Lazy says the album will likely feature appearances by Mo Thugs other acts as well. One bone gotta break the ice for Mo Thugs, he says. Mo Thugs is the name taken by a group of young, aspiring Cleveland acts who worked the local talent show circuit about four years ago. Now they make up the label. Poetic Hustlers, Boogie Nike, Mo Hart, and Tony Tone is described as a cool, mellow group that raps about urban life. Lazy describes Graveyard Shift, consisting of Tombstone, Sin, and Little Aaron, as more underground. Way under the underground, he stresses. Tre, a female trio, features Rebecca, Kim, and Nico. I'm going to glamorize them, Lazy says. The label is based out of Lazy's one-story University Heights home and is primarily run by the five bone rappers and three others. Running a company seeking a national market would seem quite a task for the young men. Just two years ago, they claimed to have shared a $50 a week salary while recording in an eight-track studio for the Cleveland-based label, Stony Burke. As Lazy sits in his office, he envisions Mo Thugs as a Def Jam-type operation. That is the label hip-hop mogul Russell Simmons started as a college student. Def Jam is listed by Black Enterprise Magazine as part of the second most successful black entertainment company in the country, behind Black Entertainment Television. Lazy and crew are proven hustlers. Their maturity has come through the loss of their mentor. Rapper Easy e died of AIDS last March, and some sobering financial lessons. The rappers are in a dispute with Stony Burke Records over the release of Near Gold, Faces of Death, recorded in 1992 by four of the five Bone members. And Lazy says the group is fighting to get more than the six figures it has received for the six million records it has sold for the Ruthless Relativity label. Ruthless's finances have been locked. While California courts try to sort out matters among creditors and family members following owner Easy es death. Still... Lazy admits, since dealing with Kermit Henderson of Stony Burke Records, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from Easy e He did say there would come a day when I would have to handle all of it. 
The Def Jam deal came about after the New York label approached Bone about a song for the soundtrack of Simmons' recent rap movie, The Show, whose soundtrack features a Bone tune. Lazy says the mogul was interested in meeting the group, and when he did, they fed him information about their own label and plans. Simmons was interested in buying in. From Easy e to Russell Simmons, Lazy says, two ballers in the game. Nina Records. The noisy heat fan in Nina Records' food warehouse-turned-practice studio kicks in. Promotional director Walter White pops a videotape into the VCR and adjusts the volume. He sits back to watch the label's debut artist, Cosette Morgan, perform her debut music video, Stay. Tomorrow hails the real challenge, convincing BET and Video Jukebox to air it, as Nina fought to convince hundreds of stations to play Morgan's song. I was under the illusion that if I put together a wonderful product and had glorious music and wonderful packaging, it has to sell, says Nina's owner, Edwin Bruder. That's not the case. All you end up with is glorious music and wonderful packaging. Bruder started in the food import business, but packaging and shipping left him unfulfilled. He felt a need for something more intellectual and creative. He started a production company that moved to full label status after Morgan walked into his office and began singing like Aretha Franklin. When Bruder couldn't get major label attention for her, Bruder released her himself. He hired promoters and set about the business of scoring a hit. The competition is Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey and such, Bruder says. So the quality has to be at least that good. Nina built a database of 300 commercial and 500 college stations and alerted them of Morgan's progress with weekly faxes and phone calls. We're not shy, Bruder says. There's that fine balance between being aggressive and being obnoxious. And sometimes I'm afraid we've crossed the line. But I'd rather it be that than not noticed. And Nina felt relief when through the August charting of Morgan's All Out of Love, it realized stations and listeners had noticed. There was a tremendous feeling of validation, Bruder says, that what we were doing wasn't just being done for our own ego, that we weren't fooling ourselves. There were people out there who appreciated the music, thought it was worthwhile seeing us on the charts with the big guys and ahead of hundreds of songs. Nina has signed and completed production of an extended play record by Detroit rapper Wolverine. He raps over dark, jazzy beats, reminiscent of a mellow, acid jazz flavor. While Nina took Morgan directly to radio, the strategy for Wolverine is to work the streets, where hip-hop finds its core audience. First of all, we have to see if there's as much excitement as we think we're going to see, Bruder says. Once we have a story to tell, once we have sales, then we can take it to the radio. Asked how he feels about his leap into the music business, Bruder says... 90% of the time, I'm thrilled, and 10% of the time, I say, what the hell did I do? It's very much a roller coaster ride. Photos by Scott Shaw, Plain Dealer, Photographer. Photo 1, Lazy Bone, Above, and the other four members of Cleveland's multi-platinum rap act, Bone Thugs and Harmony, have become businessmen. They now run their own Mo Thugs records. Photo 2. Bone Thugs and Harmony members, Lazy Bone, third from left and Busy Bone, third from right, co-owners of Mo Thugs Records Relax, in a studio at the Cleveland label with members of the label's rap acts, Poetic Hustlers, and Graveyard Shift. Photo by Andrew Sifranic, Plain Dealer. Photographer Photo 3. Jim Buchanan says he wants his label, Shining Star Records, to beam with positive lyrical content.